Hello, this is Tom, a.k.a. Jerion here for Tabletop Tap Room. Today we're discussing the OGL. And uh, there is a disturbance in the force, or should we say disturbance in the OSR gaming community. There's a disturbance in D&D. And uh, uh, the Sith Lords are bringing out one D&D. So... Uh, what is the OGL? Well, the OGL was this safe harbor that let people publish. And basically it was, here's the safe harbor. If you're within the safe harbor, you are safe from the storms of litigation. Just remain in here. You won't be delisted. You won't be canceled. Your product can always be for sale under the OGL. And now we get this uh, 1.1. And uh, now it's a misnomer. I, I think it's a misnomer called the 1.1 an OGL. It's not an OGL. It's restrictive as hell. It's restrictive. It's closed. Better name for it is the closed gaming license. Um, it's the come and bend over the table, we're going to screw you gaming license is what it really is. And, and people are reacting to it heavily and so going, whoa, publishers are. Um, <clears throat> so it's... It doesn't even matter if the leak is true or not. At this point, people are reacting. They could be overreacting. They could be underreacting. Um, but the genie's out of the bottle, and people are like, we don't trust wizards anymore at this point. And why should you? They came out in December and said, brand's under-monetized. we got to get more money. So everything they do from this point on, you kind of have to interpret through that lens. What are they doing right now? A month later, um, we've got to interpret it through this, through the, we want more money. That's what this is about. They want more money. You have to interpret it through that lens. Now, you also have to think about the fact that they came out with this thing and said, you got seven days to sign. Who does that? You know, I mean, like these small companies are going to, they don't have lawyers on speed dial, not like Wizards of the Coast, not like Hasbro. They got to find a lawyer. They got to get him to look at it. They got to get him to advise advise them. They got to make a decision whether they want to go in. And they didn't make it easy. They took a 900 page document, made it a 9,000, uh, excuse me, a 900 word document, made it a 9,000 word document. So it's complicated and it doesn't really have open gaming provisions in it. That because everybody's like, well, well, what about this and what about that? And um, <laughs> you've got sub licensees under the uh, original OGL. It says, like, if uh, somebody uses the OGL and then they sub license their material to somebody else, and then the person gets canceled out of the OGL who was the original licensee, it doesn't affect sub licensee, they can keep doing what they're doing. They've not addressed that. It, 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 they've, they've turned it into a cluster screw-up of epic proportions. <clears throat> so it's uh, – and, and again, it's not an OGL. It's a closed gaming license. So let's call it what it is. Um, you know, it's got some interesting provisions in there that if you sign on, I mean, not only do they get all rights to everything you do, and um, can totally take, you know, I, I like uh, Eric Tenkar's uh, analogy of a car. You buy a car, you're making car payments, you're putting gas in it, you're paying for maintenance. But your neighbor has the right to take your car and use it. And I mean, you're paying for it, but he just takes it, goes on a two-month vacation, driving your car. Uh, that's what the provisions of the 1.1 closed gaming license give to Watsy over your material. You lose all right to it. Oh, you still own it, but you lose all right. We, we do whatever we want with it. We could license it out to somebody else. You got a competitor? We can license it to them. They could publish your stuff, not pay you for publishing your stuff. <laughs> yeah. They want to take your stuff and make a movie out of it and make money on it? They can do that. You get nothing. I mean, you, there's a lot to it there's other interesting pro uh, provisions in there like uh if you sign on and then they uh give you 30 day notice to say you know what you, you're no longer in we're kicking you out of the club we're delisting you and you've got money in stock 
you've paid artists for the art, and then you've paid to have stuff printed, and then they're like, boom, you, there's a 30-day you must destroy your stock provision if they delist you. Um, <laughs> doesn't matter. You got money in there. They're telling you, screw you. They can destroy your business at any time they want with any number of provisions of this closed gaming license. So that's kind of scary. And because of that reason, a lot of people are going, no. A lot of content creators are saying, oh, and my favorite, actually, I will, let's, let's pull up the, uh, so this is the Arcane Library. Um, this woman is Kelsey Dion, Dion, if I'm pronouncing it right. She produces Shadow Dark uh, RPG. And, uh, you know, so I uh, spent the weekend going through one OGL video after another, you know, just trying to get my finger on the pulse. And um, now she's not the only one like this. I'm, I'm using her as an example because she said something very specific that I like and that I want to bring up. And uh, is she, she taking the Shadow Dark her Shadow Dark RPG, they were about to go forward with the publishing of it. And they put the brakes on, and they're stripping out the, they are quote-unquote stripping out the OGL Gremlins. I love how she put that. That's not what really got me. Well, she's also, as they're doing this, they're putting up their own OGL. Look, you open gaming license. You can use our material, um, and it's going to be irrevocable. Because that was the one word that the uh, original OGL lacked was this word irrevocable. And so I was like, that's cool. Now, I'm not thinking, will she become as big as Paizo did by doing this? Uh, probably not. And here's the reason why. Is there are dozens, um, beginning to you know have a, like a mental list of people who are going, not, absolutely not. Not signing the 1.1. Strip the OGL out of our product. And the fundamental thing is just you don't have to use it. I mean, I like RPG Pungent made this point on his video that you don't have to use the OGL. If you're not using the SRD, you don't have to use the OGL. Just write it. They, can, they cannot copyright rules. They can only copyright the expression of the rules. Therefore, just write it yourself from your own head. Don't use the SRD. And he's right. And plenty of people have stars without number, um, you know, Menser and crew and cask when they did Eldritch Enterprises, they were like, yeah, no. And, and I mean, these were old TSR hands. What did they know that made them say, yeah, we're not going to trust Wat Watsy. What did they know? I mean, uh, what tea leaves were they reading? I, acquiring minds want to know. So you don't have to use it. And all of a sudden, there are dozens who are saying, no, we're stripping it out. We're not going to use it. We're done. We're done with that. So there's one school of thought that says that Watsi's doing this because they don't want to create another Pathfinder. When they went from, when they, Delisted uh, 3.5, they went to 4E. 4E was a cluster screw up. And that, it, well, you know, it, it took Paizo a year to really get their act together, but uh, Paizo came out with Pathfinder and it got big. People were big on pa Pathfinder. Um, you know, they don't want to create another third party contender, uh, competitor. And uh, so they don't want to create another Pathfinder. Well, what's happening now through these actions, through these repressive actions, they're going to create about 20 Pathfinders. Shadow Dark, probably going to be one of them. Um, there's going to be 20 Path. And, and people are going to get, hey, excuse me? No, I'm not writing for you. I'm not writing to give you everything I write, uh, let you take control of it. Um, I'll go right for this other, you know, and then you've got people like Shadow Dark, like the Arcane Library here, they are going, we'll give, not only will we give you an OGL, we'll make it perpetual. I mean, that was the one word the OGL lacked. 
So now there's going to be 20 Pathfinders out there. And if you, you don't like one, you go to another one. Oh, you don't like that one? 17 more. Just try them out. <laughs> and like like uh, Stars Without Number. Why did I ever buy Stars Without Number? I bought Stars Without Number because they gave away a free version. I bet these people are going to give away a, you know, a light, you know, stars without number, you know, has a light version, like a, you know, try it. You know, here's a free sample. It's everything you need to do to be a player. The, basically the game master version is, is, is the, uh, is the pay for version, but everything you need to be a player, you can get a PDF uh, for stars without number. Well, actually I now hear there's a second edition. I've not checked it out. I was perfectly happy with first edition. Didn't see the need for a second edition. So uh, I do need to go check it out and see if everything I'm saying concerning Stars Without Numbers still holds true with second edition. But I love the products I've bought from, um, from that company. So it's probably just as good, if not better, probably fixes things. That, you know, I didn't play it enough to note this, 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 and this need to be tuned up. They were probably aware, and they probably tuned those things up. Fabulous product. No OGL. So uh, there's going to be about 20 Pathfinders out there, I think. And, and that's what you're going to see. And, yeah, you're still going to see a lot of dross on um, one bookshelf. People just producing stuff, and it's, eh, the quality's meh. Yeah, you don't have to buy it. Don't buy it. But you know what? There's going to be about 20 pathfinders are going to going to be about i think 20 names that'll be like yeah these these companies aren't bad they're not bad you publish you could publish for any of these companies you know they're, they're probably going to give out a uh uh creative commons or ogl or you know whatever and allow people to publish for them and not going to be a problem so hobby's not going anywhere what should we do well, number one, don't use the OGL. That's number one. Number two, you need to be socially active. We need to push back. Part of that is that there is a um, petition uh, on change.org, and uh, there's going to be a link in my show notes for the petition. I highly um, implore you, hit the link. It's it literally going to take you seconds. Go sign the petition won't it won't cost you anything okay just sign the petition we need a tsunami of pushback because enough pushback and companies do blink and uh you know i, I think of a famous example um there was a, the ceo of pepsi wrote an autobiography called the other guy blinked it was about the cola wars in the 80s the 70s and the 80s they do the pepsi challenge Try to get people. Can you tell which one? Co oh, yeah, I, I drink Coca Cola. I tell which one do you like more? I like this one more. And they pull the slide. Well, Pepsi was beginning to chisel out some market share from Coke. And so Coke blinked. They came out with New Coke. And they got Bill Crosby to schlep the New Coke. And within like, it was like two months later, Old Coke was back. We're, we're still doing New Coke. You have, you have two great choices, but we know that we have Coke Classic. And then they just dropped new Coke. <laughs> and Coke Classic reverted back to being Coke. Um, <laughs> but when that happened, all of these people were pissed off. And they were like, Pfft, and they went over to Pepsi. And they're like, you know what? Pepsi's not bad. And, and so uh, that's when Pepsi really took off, was at that point. The other guy blinked. Now, there's another story from his thing, and this story really, I think, applies to Wizards of the Coast. He talked about when he went over to uh, Frito-Lay as an executive, and he was given a tour, and he was being told this story about how these engineers, you know, they were on paper, they figured, oh, we could substitute this ingredient for this ingredient, and we could save this much money. And they did it without really getting it authorized from the top. And all of a sudden, sales of Fritos, so they did that. And for and that month, sales of Fritos went. 
and they dropped. So everybody was like, what, what the hell's going on? And so investigation happens. They find out what happened that, that, that uh, this engineer did this on his own and he was, he was canned. Boom. You're, you're gone, buddy. And so the guy telling um, uh, this guy, this, this story uh, says, the moral of the story is don't F with the Fritos. And I've never forgotten it. And what, what Watsi is doing right now is they're effing with the Fritos. And, um, and it's not going to have the results that I think they want it to have. Um, I think it's possible that they will drive some third party um, publishers out of business. Um, I think it's possible that they will crush anybody foolish enough to uh, sign on um, to the 1.1. Uh, yes. And, you know, some of what they're doing with this this document does not strike me as legal. Not a lawyer. Don't take legal advice from me. But does not strike me as legal. And what that means is, is that it's something that could be litigated. You know, so it's be possible to fight back. But the problem is, Watsi made how much money last year? I mean, they're a billion dollar company. They've And, and Hasbro has how much money? They've got deep pockets, so they probably think they've got enough money to abuse you with uh, injunctions and motions and and bury you, and you really can't fight back. Because I'm also sure they don't really want to get in front of a judge. Because uh, you get in front of a judge, um, it could be a crapshoot. You're rolling the dice. You could be a, you could roll a one. You could roll a twenty. It could be a DC fifteen, and you roll a sixteen. Uh, you, the small guy, roll the 16, roll that hard, roll that hard 20. Um, and then then the judge bangs the gavel and, and, and they're not happy with what they got. So I don't think they're looking to actually take you to court and have the judge bang the gavel and so ordered. Uh, I really think they're just looking to punk everybody and throw their weight around. And uh, they probably believe they can get away with it. And maybe they can. I don't know if the intestinal fortitude is out there by any one publisher to push back, which brings me to the social engagement. Sign the petition. You see a petition, sign it. You see a post on social media, comment, support it, like it. Okay, push back. Um, don't be an ass hat. Okay, but... Do it respectfully, but push back. Um, you know, it, kind of funny seeing somebody doing a video, middle finger and F Watsy. Yeah, that's funny. No, be respectful. Be respectful. It, people, you get more traction. Be respectful. Push back. And uh, ultimately, there might be crowd funders to raise legal fees, to uh, pay for legal fees, to, to fight this. And um, we're going to all have to get behind it because if we don't hang together, we will fall apart. And um, so it really requires the hobby to come together. Now, I know some of you, because I've already had the comments, I've shared the, the petition, the change.org petition, and I've gotten the comments. Some, some people will say it doesn't even affect me. Actually, it does. And I'm going to tell you how. Now, I get it. You bought your books 30 years ago. You bought your rule books. You don't buy modules. So you say, it doesn't affect me. <clears throat> it does. Because there's a whole market of ancillary products out there only because there is a robust and healthy hobby that has just grown. Okay. Remember back in the day, your first set of dice. My first set of dice were the uh, box set dice from the basic D&D box set mold bay box set. Those things were cheap chipped, rounded, became marbles. But somebody came along and says, you know, this, this, there's enough people in this hobby. I think I can make some money on high-impact dice. <laughs> okay? They're like, I think I can make some money. Um, so they started selling high-impact dice, and we all bought them. So we could stop braiding dice from our, you know, our parents' Yahtzee game, Right? <laughs> you, you, you know you did that i know i did it you know it was, uh, like uh i grew up on an airbase 
Neighbors are moving. They throw some stuff out. Is that a Yahtzee game in the trash? Open that thing up, take the dice out, leave the Yahtzee game there. <laughs> Put the dice in my pocket. Add them to my dice bag. Absolutely. They're all D6s, sure. Um, remember vinyl mats? Didn't exist back in the day. Wouldn't we have killed as kids? You know, 12, 13-year-old kids that have those vinyl mats. I would have killed to have those vinyl those vinyl masks that came out with. They only came out because somebody looked at it and said, you know what? I think I can make a buck here. And we're happy for that person to make a buck because we're like, this is a good product. And I got it at a reasonable price. And I'm happy to use this product now. You know, I just bought my steps on a, a vinyl mat, gave it, gave it to him for, uh, for Christmas. Great product. I could have never imagined, I would have never imagined the vinyl mat as a kid. I said, someday we're going to have vinyl mats. We're going to draw on them, dry erase markers. You know, because back then I was using a grease pencil. <laughs> for mark, so put something in a plastic sleeve and mark it up with the grease pencil. Uh, the uh, Starfleet Battles. Remember that? Starfleet put the, put the uh, ship sh sheet in there and it'd be marking it up with the grease pencil. And then you rub it out with a tissue and then play again. Uh, we didn't have dry erase markers. The dry erase came out. I was like, whoa. Oh, these are cool. Okay. And these products come out because somebody says, you know what? I think I might just be able to uh, do something a little bit better. And chances are, even though you're sitting there saying, not even going to affect me, the robust, healthy hobby produces products. I'm almost certain you buy. You can't tell me you don't have high impact dice. Those only exist because of a healthy, robust hobby. Okay, vinyl mats only exist. Not, not everybody uses them. Only exist because of a healthy, robust hobby. Okay. A lot of YouTube exists. You, you want to learn how to do something? You want to learn how to craft something? It exists because of a healthy, robust hobby. Because people are like, I think I can produce videos and I can get monetized. And that's because people will like my videos. Right? So it does affect you. You are part of a body. You know, it's that uh, that parable from the Bible about, uh, you know, everybody in this, you know, don't, don't say, you know, one part of the body is in pain and the rest of the body suffers. Don't say, because I'm a foot, you know, and the eye is suffering. It doesn't affect me. It does affect you. <clears throat> so, yes, uh, don't bury your head in the sand. Uh, step up. And, and I, I strongly implore every single one of my subscribers, go sign that petition. If you haven't already, that's the link is there in the show notes. It's going to take you two seconds to do it. I literally clicked on the link uh, while watching 10 Cars Tavern on Saturday night and signed the petition. It, yeah, five seconds, maybe. It, it, didn't, it didn't take me but five seconds. And I'm still watching the video still chiming in, in in the live stream uh, chat. So easy peasy, and uh, everybody should do it. We're all connected. We're all part of the same hobby, and uh, none of us are unaffected. We are all eventually affected. We all must hang together. So watershed, this is a watershed moment, and uh, either we're going to be stupid about it, and bury our heads in the sand, or we're going to say, no, I'm going shoulder to shoulder with my brothers in arms, um, all of us hanging together, all of us mingling our voices together as one tsunami shouting back at Watsy saying, hell no, mad as hell, not going to take it anymore. Then we have power, or we can let them crush us separately, which they can. So this is Tom for Tabletop Tap Room. Said my piece, please, please, at the very least sign the petition. Please support your local publishers who are saying, that's it. We're stripping the OGL. We are all affected. I love you all. Please. Uh, this is Tom for Tabletop Tap Room. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks to my subscribers. You guys are great. If you have not subscribed, please do hit the like, subscribe, bell icon. But please, please, please click on the petition, sign it. Five seconds of your life. Add your voice 
to the tsunami of voices that we need to shout in Watsi's face, hell no, not taking this. Keep on gaming. Thank <laughs> you.